Amen. Amen. Grab your Bibles very quickly. I just want you to know that God gave us a mission. Oh, man. Hallelujah. God gave us a mission. And when he gives that mission and that vision, he gives provision. Amen. He's already stored it up. And then sent a message to me, said, it's coming. It's coming right here. And it didn't even take 24 hours, and it was there. I said, well, thank you, Jesus, for your provision, who makes a way when there is no way who open doors when there ain't no door. There's just a wall there, Lord. He said, no, it's not. Look again. And then there's a door. Who, who is like unto our God? And he gave us a mission. Our mission is to raise up ambassadors around this world. Woo. To warn, to equip, to reach, and to love mankind. And we're going to do that by raising we're going to raise them up. We've been talking about that as you grab your Bibles. We're going to raise up, raise. We're going to reach the lost. We're going to actively prepare for the return of Jesus. We're going to instruct and inspire. Oh, man, I'm still learning myself. I, be, I got it as my screensaver. <laughs> I told the leaders, put it as your screensaver so you can see it. And today we're going to talk about S, which is selflessly serve the community. And then we're going to engage in kingdom fellowship and community it's happening you don't even know it it's happening Tell, look at somebody and say it's happening amen. you know black people like to talk to their neighbors <laughs> amen look at somebody else tell them it's happening you don't see it but it's happening watch this say you don't see it but they're coming the lost are oh man I, maybe I'm the only one. The Bible says, Brother John, that the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul that repents. The lost are coming to be transformed. Thank you, Sister Gigi. They're coming to be transformed, renewed, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go with me to John chapter 13, verse 1. I'm going to read down from verse 1 to 6. John chapter 13, looking at, beginning at verse 1, amen, and then we'll go all the way on down to 6, verse 6. Will you get it? Say amen. If you don't have it, you can say, whoa, man. Some of y'all don't get it, but y'all afraid to say, whoa, man, amen, I understand, I understand. St. John Chapter 13, verse 1. And it says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments. Say, laid aside his garments. And took a towel and girded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he was girded with. Then cometh he to Simon Peter and saith, uh, uh, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, doest thou wash my feet? But I want to look at something. The part I want to look at is it says, having loved his own, in verse 1, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. We're going to talk today about the love factor. Come on, somebody say the love factor. the love factor. You can be seated. The love factor. The love factor. Selflessly serving the community. Uh, the S in our quest to raise up ambassadors is to selflessly serve the community. But to do that, we have to know how to do it. And I think today in our day, we don't, many people don't understand how to do this, how to put forth the correct effort in order to make that happen. 
there are several things you must do and all of them are contained within the word love. The first thing you must do, and I want you to write it down, is love must be your motivator. Come on, say love must be your motivator. The Bible says he loved his own which were in the world and he loved them unto the end. This teaches us that love produces no quit. There is no quit in someone that loves. All you got to do is let somebody fall in love with you <laughs> and then try to leave them and watch them go crazy over you leaving them. They'll be outside. Some of you might be in this room now that I'm looking at some of the faces. Some of you might have been outside of that window singing boys to me in at two in the morning talking, baby, please don't go away from me. Amen. <laughs> love will love must be your motivator. The Bible says that love suffers long. If you love something, you don't quit. When you love something, you figure out a way to do it. We want, people want to start companies, but they don't love what they do. People want to say, I want to be a part of a ministry. But do you really love the ministry? How bad do you love it? When you love something, you think about it morning, noon, and night. When I got married to my wife, I thought about her in the morning. I thought about, I still think about her in the noonday. And I think about her at night. When I see a funny video, I think about my wife. Well, what do you love enough that God has given you to think about in morning, noon, and night? If love is not your motivator, you will quit because I'm with you. But as long as what you are asking me to do does not frustrate what my normality is, then I, I don't know if I got somebody in here with me. Love must be your motivator. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 14, to put on charity, which is the perfect bond, the bond of perfectness. When love is your motivating factor, you will operate in excellence. It is the word perfectness. Very important. Do you know that one of the reasons, watch this, that every, did you know this, that the statistics show that every bad neighborhood is inhabited by almost 90% renters? That they found that when a person buys a home, they take care of it better because they invested more into it. You know how it is when you didn't bought the house. Hey, kids, y'all need to stay off my grass. But if it's not your house, that ain't my grass. <laughs> That belongs to somebody else. So you don't care about it. So you don't put the excellence into it that you would if it was yours. You don't love it. You don't love it. That's why I'm hesitant to let people borrow my stuff. Because it ain't yours. And you don't care about it. You, it don't mean nothing to you to sit in my car and just start eating chips and crumbs going everywhere. I'm like, hey, my man, <laughs> did you put in on this car? Oh, man, it's all right. Uh, watch this. You know, the Tesla got a little, I hit a button and <laughs> you might flip up out of there. <laughs> hey, man, it took me a while to get this thing. I had to go to work. You weren't there with me when I had to work and save up for the down payment. Amen. You don't love it. And we can tell what you love by how much care you put into it. When I see my mother, I walk up to her, hey, Ma, I don't handle her hard because she's my mother. I love her. I cherish her. When we come to a step, I say, Mama, you got it? Watch out. Let me get your purse for you. I'm in here, grown man. I don't carry purses. But my mother was struggling to carry the purse, so give me your purse. How much do you love your leaders? Oh man, I was talk I love my apostle. I was talking to him that yesterday. And he was talking about, he said, man, when I went down to Oklahoma, to our other brother and sister who are under his covering, under his covering, he said, they were frustrating me. I said, what you mean they frustrate? He said, they took so much care for me. I thought they was going to try to make my legs move and walk and help me walk. I said, they did what? Because they're not going to outdo me in blessing you. 
what you care about the love must be your motivating factor why don't you put your kids out because you love them why don't you beat them almost to death well some of you all don't beat them almost to death is because you love them the police don't love them they'll pull a gun out and shoot them in a minute because they didn't have them in the belly for nine months I'm trying to go somewhere with this. If we are going to selflessly serve the community, you got to love. You got to love them. Why do I show up? Not out of obligation to preach. If God tells me to leave today, I'm gone. If God tells me to leave anything, I'm gone. I'm not going to be disobedient. If he tells me to roll, let's roll. We were in California doing great. And the Lord said, it is time to go back to Detroit. I said, when? <laughs> you mean at the end of days? You want me to come back right before the book of Revelation? Because you know it get cold there, Lord. I didn't ask you that. I just told you to leave. And I said, Lord, because I love you. If you tell me to go to Alaska, I'm going to Alaska. I don't know if I got somebody with me. If you tell me to go somewhere, I don't want to go. You love me, but you only give me what's comfortable for you. You don't love me. Let me keep going. Y'all with me, but y'all ain't with me all the way. I'm going to keep preaching it anyway. I don't care. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he did one thing. He gave. But he gave something he did not want to give. He did not want to give Jesus for us to beat him and spit in his face. And to crucify him and to hurt him and to throw him away and to, to not care about him. He, the Bible says he was despised and rejected of all men. Not some. When he got ready to get taken, all of the 12 disciples who said, Lord, I'll be with you. They took off running. Because they didn't love. Peter didn't love the people like Jesus did. Because Jesus said, Lord, I take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will. I love them too, Father. And on the cross, he said what? Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Hmm. He loved the Bible says that God loved them. Watch this. You have to give what you don't want to give. When you give out of love, it can hurt. Most of us want to give in our comfort zone. The Lord had been speaking to me in prayer about how he is sending resources. So immediately I said, I have to give an amount of money that will hurt me. That God may 100 times that amount increase me most people want to be blessed but they never give most people want to sit and receive but they never want to give and the bible teaches us that you are not going to receive if you don't give you will never reap if you never sow selflessly serving the community this is the hardest message i've probably had to preach since i started do you know why? Because don't nobody want to go in the community. How do I know it? We got a million churches on every corner. How many of them came up to you and said, are you saved? The only ones that witness is the Jehovah's Witness and the Mormons. But we say, God so loved the world. Why don't you love the world? You don't love them, so you don't go to them. They got to come to us. Hey, man, you want, I want to invite you to a service. Why don't you preach to me right here? Why don't you come to my house and tell me about the gospel of Jesus Christ? Love got to be your motivator for you to do it. If I love you, I'll, if something, my wife is out of town, if something go wrong, you think I won't drop right now? Jump in my car and drive all the way to Illinois? I love her. If it's somebody I don't know, I ain't going. They don't get the same as the one I love. This is why the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, all of your spirit. And then he said, love the Lord. Love your neighbor. We love the first part. But we don't like to love our neighbor. When Jesus said, love your neighbor, somebody said, who is my neighbor? Everybody is your neighbor. 
But Jesus didn't say that. You know who he said? He named one of his enemies. Your neighbor is the person you don't like. Let me tell you something about this. I guess I got to teach it. What I've encountered in my 36 years of ministry, pastoring multiple churches, is that when people don't love it, they will leave you at a drop of a dime. And I'm so used to it, I can look at somebody and be like, hey, watch this. Hey, they're about to leave. And my wife be like, you sure? Oh, man. Okay. I just, uh, I don't feel like I'm being fed. So you was fed last week. But then when I said something that got, got on, I got in your face, then all of a sudden you're not being fed spiritually. Using words they don't even know how to spell. I, I didn't, I'm not even being fed spiritually. I just say, amen. God told you to leave? Okay, God is schizophrenic because he told you to come here. Now all of a sudden, what I really want to say is, I knew you didn't love it in the beginning because you never came to me and said, we could do this to get better. You mean you never, you were in a ministry for 20 years, you never thought about how you can make it better? That if they give you the job to clean the toilets, I would be online researching new types of things that can, I'd be in there, I'm the, I come in with a whole outfit on. Toilet man. I got the job to clean the toilets. I never forget in, in uh, I learned this lesson in Japan. I was a young, I wasn't that young, but I was young in ministry. And the toilet clogged up. And I went to one of the ministers and said, hey, the toilet is clogged up. And he looked at me. Went in there. He was an, he was an elder. Grabbed his, the plunger, and it was nasty. Cleaned it out, came out, looked at me, and walked away. And I said, ah, I missed an opportunity that ministry, the word ministry means to serve. But you can't serve them if you don't love them. He loved the ministry so much, he didn't want to see this filth in the toilet that would make somebody that's lost a man. They don't even care about their toilets. And he rolled his sleeve up, cleaned the poop up, and then afterwards washed his hands and went and taught. And I got on my face that day and repented. Said, Lord, never again. If we got to go and cut the grass, I'll cut the grass. I promise you this. And not just for this ministry. But for every ministry that I am connected with. <laughs> Selflessly serve. Love got to be the factor. <laughs> it's quiet in the church. It's quiet in the church today. You know the one thing I don't like about the church, Brother John? I'm talking about the church building. It's set up where everybody can sit down and look at one person. I went to this one place and they had it where all of the pews were surrounding the guy. And he was in the middle and he was moving and they were jumping up and going crazy. They, people really believe that the church is just there for you to get a word and to go home. No, God could have just took you to heaven after you got saved. Why would God save you from your sins, leave you in a place where it's nothing but sin temptation? <laughs> Why wouldn't he just be like, Woo, man, you're going to mess up. Come on, man, I got you. you just absent from the body. No, Lord, don't absent me from the body. Just take me up like Elijah. I don't want to do the dying part. Just take me up to see you. And you would be with God. He left you here. To help the people. That's the first thing. Watch this. I'm going to give you something real quick. In order to do it, watch this. 
that fir my first point is love must be your motivator. When love is your motivator and love is my motivator, something happens that is powerful. We unite. And I want to show you the power of unity. It's one of the reasons I've been saying, come, join. I'm not trying to grow membership. I don't care about that. We, would, we, we probably was doing bigger online than we was in person, right? We could have expanded online and went out. If that was the case, I would have stayed in California. We had 40 families at the beginning committed. Families, not one in 40 people, 40 families that said we will join and we will begin the church. Then I said, the Lord didn't say it. God bless y'all and walked off, right? It's not about that. It's the unity. Look at this. Do you know that black Americans, African Americans, make nearly $1 trillion every year? We, not the country, black people, are the seventh largest comp country e economically in the world. That there are whole countries in Europe, in Africa, in South America that don't bring in as much money as us. Watch this. I asked AI, because you know AI, that's, I call him Larry. I said, hey Larry, he said, hey John, quit calling me that, I'm an AI. I said, okay AI, I got a question for you. I said, why is that? And this is what I found out. We are the only community where the money doesn't circulate amongst us one time. As soon as I get my money, I'm spending it outside of my community. <laughs> I'm just showing you about this love and the power of unity. What happens? Watch this. In the Jewish community, they actually can make less than us. But their money circulates 20 times. So where, whereas it is one trillion... It then becomes 20 trillion because we're unified together. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Amen. So what am I saying? If we want to reach the lost, you think we're going to do it with just a couple of people doing it? We got to unify. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to just keep it moving. Y'all look like y'all ready to go. All right. I'm going to preach it anyhow. Facebook, Instagram, Instaface. Amen. The second thing you got to do according to the word of God. If we're going to reach the loss, is you got to love the people that betray you. The Bible says that in the midst of this, Jesus is sitting at a table. He's sitting at a table. He's about to serve his disciples. He's about to serve his disciples. Just think about this for two seconds. Jesus is about to serve his disciples. And he's trying to show them how they're supposed to be. What's happened now that we fast forward 2,000 years? How many people served you today? How many homeless people? How many homeless people live in Detroit? You know the first thing I realized when I got to California? It doesn't get cold in the winter. I said all the homeless people in Detroit. That was one of the first things I realized. 70 degrees year-round in California. It's negative. Sometimes 10, 20. They are literally freezing to death every day. The news won't p play it. They won't talk about it. They're dying. They're dying. They're dying. How many churches do we have in the city that name the name of Jesus Christ? We going. No, let me say it like this. I'm going. And whoever want to go with me, Let's go. Amen. And if you won't unify with me, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will raise up somebody. And the hurtful part is, usually, you got to go to the world. That's who makes the best members. I'm just keeping it one million. Let me just talk turkey. Whether they like me or not, I'm going to stand flat-footed and say it. Some of the best people I ever pastored was people that was like, hey, man, what's this Old and New Testament you keep talking about? And then within one year, they were teaching the same Bible class that I started. Teaching Greek and Hebrew. How did he learn it? Every day they were coming to me. Hey, I, how do I study this scripture? I said, look, man, read John 1 and write me a paper on it. Okay. What if I did that in the church? 
They wouldn't come back another day. He wrote it and came back and I put red all over it. It's wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. When the same man got ready to become an elder in the church, within three years of being saved, they said, how do you know all of this stuff? He said, I, I was taught. But that's not why he wanted, he learned it. It was because he wanted to know it. And he loved Jesus and sought after Jesus, sought to do his work and his will. How many people are willing to now make love the motivating factor in their lives to be a part of the body of Christ? So what are we doing? Am I preaching a message? No, we started a ministry called Impact. Kingdom impact. Every one of the letters I told you about, we, read, we literally created a ministry for each one of them. Kingdom impact is going to reach out to the community. God has performed a miracle this week. I'm meeting with some of the folks to talk to them about it today. A miracle. A miracle of miracles. And I said, Lord, but Father, I said, Father, we not just, you know, some people, yeah, they come and they might, they might. The Lord said, don't worry about it. Watch this. Wait till you see what I'm getting ready to do. I was like, oh, snap. Oh, snap. Look at this. Let me tell you why I'm, I'm loving it. Because the first time I started a ministry, I had to stand up and preach, and the place was empty. Zero. First week, zero. The second week, zero. The third week, it got out, and by the fourth week, it was 60 people. And then 70 people. And then they said, then the chaplain of the ship said, you can't meet and do that. I said, I didn't do it. God did it. So what am I saying? God is getting ready to raise up an army that's going to make a kingdom impact. Glory to God. Glory to God. What are we going to do? We're going to the young boys, the young girls. We're going to start basketball for them. Start baseball. I remember all of the churches used to do that when I was a kid. When is the last time you saw that? We coming to do it. Am I going to care whether the pastors do it with me? No. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I'll go and play with the world. We'll put us a tournament, a Christian team, where we'll all come and pray. And their pastor will come out on the court with them and pray first. And then they play basketball. And I'm going to be in the crowd. Let's go, boy. And we're going to get them everything good. We're going to have them in the Jordan outfits. They're they, they going to be so clean with it. Woo! Glory to God. Why? I want to reach the other young boys and say, hey, man, why don't y'all join my team? Watch this, but I'm not talking about basketball. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. I remember my father, my brother-in-law told me. He said, man, my brother-in-law, Doug, he said, man, me and all my brothers went up to Reverend Guy and said, hey, Rev, we want to uh, play on your team. He said they wanted to play on the team because they saw the girls. He said, man, there's some fine girls out there, right? That's going to have our Jerry Chief. Dun, dun, ch dun, 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 dun. They can't cheer no more. They didn't got old. But I'm just saying, hey, man, we did the cheer. They cheered for five seconds. I looked up. They were sitting down. Woo! I said, wait a minute. <laughs> he went up to him and said, oh, we'd like to do it. My daddy said, you can play, but you got to come to church on Sunday. They said, oh, we can do that. Preachers came out of it. Oh, man. In the bearing his daughter, right? My, my, my nephew came out of that. My niece came. The Lord did it. Who, what do we know? Who's coming? Amen. But love got to be here when they get here. You can't be sitting there and talking about, I'm coming to get a word and that's it. No, 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 no. Get out of the way. And let somebody who loves the people minister to the people. All right, I'm going to leave it alone. But I want to say this. You got to love those that betray you. This is very important. You can't selflessly serve if you don't realize that Satan does not want you to love people and help people. He doesn't care if you come to church every Sunday. He does not care, or Saturday. He does not care if you show up to Bible class. That's supposed to be your basic. That's the basics. He does not care if you uh, pick up a, oh, I picked up a can and did, he doesn't care. He cares when you start helping people. He cares when you start loving people because Jesus commanded us to do so. So because he does not want you to do that, he then brings in those who will hurt you and betray you to stop you from doing it. 
Jesus is about to save the world. So Satan doesn't raise up a Pharisee to betray him. That doesn't hurt. They already don't like me. He always brings up the person that is right there with you in your midst. And you got to love them. <laughs> because you can't turn love on and off. This is what happens. This is what it means when you are doing something for somebody in your family. They hurt you, and then you say, that's why I don't do stuff. And now that has become your motto. I stay to myself. I do me. And I don't worry about you. And God says, that's not the way. Because if God stayed to himself, we would all be dead. But he loves us. Give God a praise. So Jesus is sitting here, and I'm going to end it, I, I, but Jesus is sitting there. He knows everything is about to happen. He gets betrayed by Judas. This is, at the, this is right here at the Last Supper. He's about to die. He's looking at Peter, James, and John, smiling and passing food along, and he knows that they're getting ready to run and leave him. And Judas is sitting there in complete disrespect, when Jesus gets ready to dip his, his bread into to the, 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 the cup, they would do that and eat it. He doesn't wait till Jesus finishes. He just does it at the same time. And Jesus told John, John was sitting there, and he said, the one that dips in the cup with me, that'll show you that they'll betray you. Watch him. He does it. Lack of respect. Jesus waits. Does his. Satan enters into Judas. He leaves to go and betray him. Jesus gets up, takes off his jacket. <laughs> the people that are about to leave him and forsake him, he puts a towel around his waist. This is the son of God. This is the one that created the heavens and the earth. He is the one that formed Adam out of the dust of the ground and breathed into him and Adam became a living soul. Now here he is putting on his thing but before that, it says something. Look at the text. Judas betrays him in verse 2. In verse 3, the scripture says that Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands, <laughs> and that he was come from God, and that he went back to God. You got to love who God made you. And Jesus understood who he was, what his purpose was, who he was with, where he was going, and he could care less if everybody else would turn on him. He said, I'm going to love you anyway. I'm going to wash your feet. The feet of men. Woo. He washed their feet. He washed it. When we begin to do this, when we begin to love and let love be our motivating factor, I believe that we will reach the loss. However, comma, if you refuse to do it, God will raise up others that will love the people. The proof and the evidence of a dying church is they stop reaching the lost. They stop going out. Everybody gets old. And the church literally dies. What do you mean? They're just dying. Where are the young people? I don't know. Who's raising up the next generation? The next generation ain't here. That's not going to be our story. Amen? Give God a praise. I'm done. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thank God for his